Hi everyone, I'm Chef Susie with Escafe Online. Welcome to our live session this morning. Today we're going to be exploring quick breads. And quick breads are exactly what they say. It's a bread that is um, baked quickly. There's no yeast in the bread, so there's no fermentation. And the bread is leavened with the chemical leavener, either baking soda or baking powder, which creates steam when it's in the oven. And that's what makes it bake so quick and you don't have to do any of the, um, the proofs that you're doing with the um, fermented breads. So knowing that, let's get started. But first of all, I wanted to talk about some new programs that we have coming out soon. If you haven't heard about them, super exciting stuff here at Escothier Online. We have a program that's going to be coming out in mid-September and you can enroll now for the introductory price. And the First program is a healthy baking program, which includes sections in, on gluten-free baking, as well as lactose-free baking, vegan baking, the raw diet, the paleo diet, and also diabetic baking. There's a bunch of information in that program. There's a lot of assignments to be done, and if you're interested, just contact me, or you can contact um, your um, original advisor that enrolled you, and they can give you some more information. They can even take you on a site tour of the new program. So secondly, our next program that's also gonna be coming out on the same date, mid-September, which you can also enroll now, introductory price, is molecular gastronomy. It's super modern, contemporary plating techniques that are being shown in a lot of restaurants and hotels these days. So if you wanna keep ahead of the game, definitely look into these two new programs. And like I said, your advisor will be happy to take you through it and they can take you on a site tour. Any questions, give them a call or give me a call as well. So let's get back to our quick breads. So quick breads are kind of a broad category. And today we're going to be making some loaf breads, which is what we typically think of when we hear quick bread. But the muffins and the scones and the biscuits also fall into this quick bread category. And the quick bread category that includes, like I said, the muffins and the scones and the biscuits, there's three different mixing methods. There's the biscuit method, which we all know is cutting the fat into the flour. The fat's a little bit colder. So we're cutting it um, into the flour and what we're doing is um, we're getting the flour around the little pieces of fat that creates the flakiness when it's baked in the oven through the steam. The next method is the, um, the muffin method, which is adding the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. And the third method is the creamy method. So if you have any questions on any of these and you need me to clarify, just let me know. Once again, they're quick breads because they're leavened with either baking powder or baking soda. Baking powder comes in two different forms, single action baking powder and double action baking powder. Double action is definitely more popular. The single action baking powder, it gets activated when moisture is introduced into the baking powder. Whereas the double acting baking action baking powder it gets activated when the moisture is introduced to the baking powder and also again when it's introduced to heat in the oven. So keep that in mind. If you're looking at baking powders, definitely re recommend the double acting baking powder. So knowing that, let's get started. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be exploring some loaf breads. And with these quick breads, the flavors, textures are pretty much limitless. So you can do chocolate you can do fruit, you can do vegetables with zucchini, carrot, and pumpkin like I'm gonna be doing today. And you can also do um, nuts and different flavors and spices and fresh fruits, dry fruits, just really limitless things. If you need any um, flavor ideas, be sure to let me know. Give me a call and we'll talk about that. So let's get started on just a basic, um, a basic quick bread mix. I chose this recipe today, which we're gonna be posting and making it with pumpkin, but what's really nice about this recipe is it's super versatile. You can make it with pumpkin, you can make it with bananas, you can make it with zucchini, and you can make it with carrots, uh, shredded zucchini or shredded carrots. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, 
it's the same amount, just substitute the ingredient. So it's a really nice, versatile recipe. You'll be using it in the years to come, I can guarantee you. And do we have any questions so far on anything? No questions. Okay, so I've got my pumpkin, and we're going to be creating our wet ingredient here. So I've got my pumpkin and my granulated sugar. We're going to be mixing that together, and then we're going to be adding the eggs and the oil. So do we have any questions so far? And what's really nice about a lot of these Quick bread mixes, you can make them by hand so easily. You don't even have to have your mixer. Okay, so we're just whisking these together. And especially with the fall coming, the pumpkin is nice, butternut squash is nice as well. We're doing all this by hand. When we're finished, we're going to be pouring it in some molds. And then I have a few loaves that I baked earlier that we'll be looking at. And do we have any questions so far on anything? We have a question. Where can we find the recipe? We're going to be, the question is where can you find the recipe? We're going to be posting the recipe online. There will be a link to the recipe. When you go into the archives, you're going to click on the YouTube link, which is on the bottom right hand side. And then when you go, when it pops up on the screen, you'll see the link for the recipe. But if you can't find it, definitely give us a call. We can walk you through that, especially since the site is new. Any questions that you have, be sure to give us a call. And with the new site too, speaking of the new site while I'm mixing this, the forums are so nice, and those are there for the chefs to post as well as the students too, and it's a really great way to make friends. And in one of the forums, you can post some of your own work, so it's a good, it's a really good place for you to show some of the other students with your, what you're making, either your assignments or something other than your assignments if you made something fun over the weekend. And it's a really great place to, like I said, make friends, socialize with your other students, fellow students, and you'd be surprised if you put a picture up or a comment, someone will usually comment on it. And you can make a friend easily by just clicking on someone's picture, and then you can click on the friend request. And if you need help with that, that just let us know. You can also find friends by searching by clicking on your messages, and which is um, in your dashboard, click on your dashboard, then the messages, and a search box will come up and you can type in someone's name, maybe someone that you were friends with in the other program, you lost touch, you can find them there. Definitely, if you need help with that, be sure to reach out for us and let us know. We have a question. Does that can pumpkin and also can you make your own pumpkin if it is canned pumpkin? The question is, is this canned pumpkin? It is because we didn't have any pumpkins in our grocery store this week. I couldn't find any, so I just grabbed some canned pumpkin. Nice convenience product, super good quality. You can make your own using fresh pumpkin as well, or even any of the squashes like the butternut squash. Those are really going to be coming in season in the next month or so. And what I like to do is I'll just cut my pumpkin. Like if it's a big pumpkin, pumpkin I'll cut it in wedges or quarters, or the butternut squash, I'll cut them in half. And I lay them out on a sheet pan. And I just cover them with foil, I put them in the oven, and then after they're baked and they become soft, I just kind of scoop them out of the shell, and you can put them through a sieve to get rid of that stringiness so you have something really smooth like this. And be sure that you're taking out the seeds first. So let me know if you have any questions on that as well. So I've got pretty much my wet ingredients here, which isn't... Um, very liquidy, but it's still considered a wet ingredient. And I'm going to be adding my flour, which I sifted my flour together with my baking soda, my salt, and I have some cinnamon in here too. So it's nice with these quick bread mixes, you can add your own flavors, you can add any spice, you could add vanilla or any extract as well. And do we have any questions? Okay, so I'm just finishing this off with my spatula, 
And with these quick bread mixes, some of them you will be able to pour and some of them will be just like this mix here that's a little bit thicker that you can just spoon right into your pans. So these are super easy to make. It's nice. There's no fermentations, very quick process. Then you're just gonna fill up your loaf pans and you'll be ready to go. So I've got some loaf pans ready. I've got some mini pans. You can use um, the regular loaf size or these mini ones are super cute. I've um, sprayed them with a little bit of baking spray. And typically with these loaves, you usually fill them up about two thirds of the way, a little bit less than Three quarters. I'm going to bake these in the oven at 350 degrees. And these small loaves are going to take about 20 minutes. But what you're going to want to do is look for the loaf to spring back when you touch it in the center. And you can also insert a toothpick and see if it comes out clean and then you'll know it's done. You can sprinkle some spices or nuts on top of these two before you bake them or even put them in the mix. And do we have any questions? And we have a question. How would you bake the pumpkin? Um, would you take the seeds out? The question is, is how would you bake the pumpkin? Well, the first thing that you would do is take your pumpkin, and if you have a larger one, cut it in wedges. If it's smaller, you can cut it in halves or quarters. Take out the seeds, then just go ahead and put your pumpkin like on a baking sheet, cover it with foil, Put it in the oven at 350 degrees until it's, um, until it's cooked. It's going to become soft and you'll be able to scoop it right out of that skin. You can push it through a sieve to get out the strings and then you'll be ready to go with your pumpkin puree. And it's really nice. It's a little more vibrant than um, the canned pumpkin. The canned pumpkin tastes good. It's nice when you, can't, when you don't have the fresh pumpkins available. But the pumpkin puree, if you make it on your own, it's really good use for your pumpkins like after Halloween. If you have some on your porch that didn't get eaten by squirrels or smashed by kids, you can use them to make some pumpkin puree, make your pumpkin pies, or even make your pumpkin quick bread. So these get baked 350 for about 20 minutes. Like I said, they're going to spring back when touched, or you can insert a toothpick, and if toothpick comes out clean, then you know it's done. So these little loaves are super cute because you can just cut them in slices and fan them out. And they also make great gifts, especially for the holiday. You can wrap it up in some pretty wrap with some ribbon and put a tag on it. And um, it's really a nice little delightful thing to give to someone. So keep that in mind. So these will go in the oven. But I've got some quick breads that I made earlier. So we're going to take a look at them. <clears throat> So we have a nice variety here. I've got a zucchini and pecan that I made using the same recipe. I just used zucchini instead of the pumpkin and I added some pecans. I've got banana walnut and I also made with a different recipe, I made a Gruyere cheese and onion loaf. And these loaves don't only have to be sweet, they can be savory as well. So we'll post the recipe for this one too. And you can use these in a variety of applications and you can serve them for breakfast, lunch, snacks, or even on buffets. And with the zucchini, I wanted to show you what I did with this one, which goes over really well at my house. I made a sandwich with some chicken salad. And my chicken salad, I just made my basic chicken salad recipe and it's got some celery and some onions in it for some crunch. And the zucchini bread is nice too. It's a nice little sweetness and um, the nuts add a nice crunch too. And I'm serving this with a, little, with a little baby arugula and some plum tomatoes and some celery and a little bit of ranch dressing. So this is a really nice use for your savory or even your sweet bread. So try them with some salads and experiment and you'll really be surprised. And we have a question. Uh, two things, when you prepared the pan, did you dust it with flour and also can you put the pumpkin in a blender to make the pumpkin puree? We have two questions. 
The question is, when I prepared the pans, did I just um, grease them or did I grease and flour them? I just grease these, works fine with these pans that I have. They're a little bit newer. If your pans are a little bit older, you may want to flour them as well. Or even with the larger loaves, sometimes I'll just put a piece of parchment in the bottom just to make sure that they're not sticking on me, that it's released perfectly. And we had another question about the pumpkin, if you could put the pumpkin in the blender. That'll work as well. After you cook the pumpkin, you can blend it up. And it'll blend most of those strings up, but you still might have a few pieces. But it's definitely a good way to um, chop it up a little bit. So knowing that, let's get back to some of our bread. So try this application with the, um, with the sweet or savory quick breads, making some sandwiches with some salads. Your family and friends will be sure to love them. They're really delightful. So let's go ahead and plate some of these breads that we have. And what's nice about the quick breads is, <clears throat> like I said, there's no leavening, and there shouldn't be any tunneling in these either. If you see some tunneling when um, you're cutting your bread, that means that you overmixed it a little bit after you put the flour in. So just be sure that the next time that you make it, that you're just a little bit more careful. And when you see the tunneling, you usually notice that the bread is just a little bit drier as well because the gluten was just a little overworked. So just be mindful of that. And what's super nice about these breads is you can serve them on platters and you can kind of just fan the breads out and it's a nice little display. So we're gonna go ahead and put our banana nut bread. We've got some nuts in here, it's really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and fan this out on our tray. Maybe as if we are serving it to some guests, maybe for breakfast, putting it out, or even a snack, or on a buffet. These are great for brunch as well. So have fun with your quick breads and make a variety of flavors. Let me know what you're making. I'm curious to hear. So then we have our little zucchini loaf. And what's nice about these little loaves is the slices are much smaller they're easy to plate up and it's just a nice little snack and if they have a few different kinds, it's kind of encouraging to try a different variety if you have the little smaller pieces. So we're just gonna go ahead and fan this on our tray. And we're just gonna be decorating this with some fruit. It's a nice little display. Quick breads are kind of an everybody thing and it seems like everyone really likes them. People are always attracted to them. So I've got some strawberries. We'll put a little strawberry on there. Maybe a few grapes and some raspberries and blueberries. And do we have any questions? Okay. So please be sure to check out these new programs that we have in place. You're really going to like them and you'll be very impressed with them as well. And especially if you're looking for some specialty baking, some gluten-free, or even some lactose-free, you'll really like the healthy baking programs. So I've got a little bit of grapes on there. Maybe we're going to sprinkle some blueberries and maybe some raspberries, and that's going to finish this off nicely. And then we'll move over to our savory quick bread. And do we have any questions on anything so far? We have another question. So do you substitute with carrots or zucchini? Do you use it shredded raw or cooked? The question is, when you substitute with carrots or zucchini, do you use them raw or cooked? I always use them raw. But when I'm doing my carrots and my zucchinis, I do a little bit of a finer shred and then they'll cook a little bit easier when they're um, baked in the mixture in the oven. I try to stay away from the thicker shred because I just like the finer one. It brings out some of the juices in the zucchini and carrots as well. So if you think of any questions after our session, just be sure to give me a call or send me an email. Be fun to talk about it. So next, we're going to be cutting our cheese and onion bread that I also made earlier. So this is a Gruyere cheese bread with, um, I just chopped up some 
white onions and I kind of cut them a little big. You can do a lot of variations on this recipe. You can use Asiago cheese as well. And you could use red onions or even green onions too. So keep that in mind when you're making your quick breads. Like I said, the um, flavors are really limitless, whatever you like and have a lot of fun with them. So let's go ahead and cut this cheese bread. Smells good. This one would also make a great sandwich as well. So have fun with your savory application to your quick breads as well as your sweet application. And don't forget to add some chocolate chips in some of the sweet breads too. Chocolate chips go really nice in the pumpkin bread as well as the banana. And even zucchini is nice for pairing with chocolate. So we're just going to go ahead and put this cheese and onion bread in one of our plates. And we're getting ready to wrap up. And if you have any questions, make sure that you get them in. Otherwise, just send me a message and we can talk about quick breads. And next week, we're going to be exploring scones, which fall into the quick bread category. They're kind of uh, a segment in their own, and we'll have some fun with scones. So if you have any scone recipes, be sure to let me know as well. So with our, um, with our onion and cheese bread, we can garnish this maybe with some tomatoes, maybe a little onion, maybe some green pepper slices. So everyone, thanks for joining us today and be in touch. Let me know if you have any questions on your quick breads and please let me know what flavors that you're making. Have fun with your quick breads and we'll see you next week and we'll be exploring scones. Goodbye.